This R&B trio will be one of the first groups to introduce New Jack Swing to the world. Hello everyone, I'm Von the Stampede and today on Unsung Shorts, I'm taking a look on the life and career of Guy. Guy was formed in Harlem, New York in 1987, founded by Teddy Riley, Aaron Hall, and Timmy Gaglin. Under the guidance of their manager, Gene Griffin, there was a, a store called Le Guy, right? There was a, a, a store called Le Guy. It was a very fashionable, high-end store, dope clothes and everything. And when they saw that name, um, Gene, Gene was like, yo, that's, that's fly. And then they all agreed, Guy. So I took up the lure, Guy. Fashion, style, that's what we're going to be. We're going to be fashion, style, and everything. Dope. That's the story I know. Timmy will say there was a store in... in in Harlem that was called Guy or whatever. I don't know that story, so I stick to the story that I know, you understand? And I like that story better because that story shows me just how fly we were. And if you can think of a boutique, any boutique store, you always have special pieces in that store, right? The group was signed up to Uptown Records and released Guy in June 13th. 1988. Fun fact, Guy's first album had the original vocals recorded at Riley's home because Riley felt they sound better at home rather than the studio. They did eventually finish re-recording the album at a professional studio. Guy would reach number 27 on the US Billboard 200 and number 1 on the R&B charts. It reached platinum in 1989 and double platinum by July of 1994. Guy produced 5 singles, Spend the Night, Round and Round, Groove Me, Teddy Jam, and I Like. Unfortunately, with the success of Guy, things weren't so great. Riley's brother was killed in a shooting and Gatlin was forced out the group by Gene Griffin because he refused to sign the management contract, meaning Griffin had full control of their publishing and income. Gatlin's face was kept on the album because he was officially part of the group and the MCA Records needed his permission to release the album. Gatlin would soon release his solo album Help on Warner Brothers Records. He would also write for Christopher Williams and Velvet DeVoe. It's like once success came and once that first single grooved me, mm -hmm. doing well, Gene tried to strong arm and pull, you know, try to make a signed contract that I wasn't going to sign. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not signing this. Right. I, I, my, first of all, we were young, so it's not like I was smart or I was just highly intelligent. It was just God was with me. I wasn't going to sign nothing, a thick ass contract. Right. That I don't know what's in it and whatever. And I was the only one that really, I believe at the time that was even concerned about why we, it's not just the fame. What are we doing? You know, so let's have somebody looking over. Well, he didn't like that. Gatlin will be replaced by Damien Hall, Aaron Hall's brother. The band will work on Do the Right Thing soundtrack with the song Fantasy. <laughs> Gene and Riley would work with Boy George on his hit, Don't Take My Mind on a Trip. In November 13, 1990, Guy released their second album, The Future. The Future peaked at number 16 on the US Billboard 200 and reached number one on the R&B album charts. Six singles were released from The Future.
Despite reaching platinum status, the future album has a very dark backstory when it was being made. A year after the release of the album, Gene Griffin was fired from the group over money. Of course, the members of Guy was upset and Aaron Hall didn't want to sing much on the second album. He quoted, There came a time where I just did not want to sing a single note. To be honest, it was money. It just became too depressing. We were the biggest group in the world and we were flat broke. It took its toll. End quote. Riley would take over some of the lead vocal duties of the future. Their beef with New Edition didn't make things better, especially one of New Edition's production managers, Ronald Boyd, was shot and killed by Anthony B, a member of Guy's security. Guy would tribute his death to a song called Long Gone. By the time Guy was gaining more popularity, the band called it quits after their fifth single. Well, Aaron ain't really paying attention to business on that, on that aspect. Teddy and Gene was already in charge, so they pushed Teddy up, up to the top. And it was everything started being Teddy Riley featuring Guy. Teddy Riley featuring Guy on the remixes, on Teddy's Jam remixes, on, on the her remix. It started being all this. So you started seeing people putting up one of the members above the rest. You understand? Instead of saying, it's okay if you said Teddy Riley featuring Guy because he was doing a remix and da da da. But then you can't say Teddy Riley featuring Guy. And I always said this in every interview, that's stupid because Teddy was in Guy. So you can't feature him if he's in the group. Why would you feature him? Now you're really trying to say, it's Teddy Riley and Guy. When who's Guy? Me and Aaron? That don't make any sense, right? If, you, if you're using common sense. But the, the industry is made up to rip the fabric of greatness apart from each other. They don't care nothing about the artists. Riley and the Hall brothers would pursue other projects. Riley would go on to produce and songwrite with other artists, such as Jane Child, co-produced Michael Jackson's album Dangerous, and produced the New Jack Swing group Wreck and Effect. Inspire any of the dangerous tracks that you produce. What do so, you remember the time that, that was for Sally we Richardson. fell in love? That was for Sally Richardson. I can't let her get away. <laughs> that, those are all. She drives me wild. <laughs> you see how I'm cutting you okay, off? Okay, those are all inspired. That was inspiration. Oh wow, great inspiration. I had all the hooks. I had remember the time hook. Ready. For in the media, we hear about Mike. We hear loads of different things about Mike, but you actually experienced Mike in its I fullest. Stayed you with stayed Mike. with Mike. We ate Popeyes and Kentucky Fried Chicken is, together. Is Mike that strange character that he was painted to be? No. So what like if there's one thing you'd want somebody to know about Michael Jackson that we don't know, what would it be? Homie in the house. Would you? What do you mean by that? He's like a homie in the house. Really? Like, like he's down. He's, he's not like, like a homie yeah. in the house. Okay. Seriously, homie in the house. The one thing I never did with Michael with Michael was take a bunch of pictures. I always, I never invaded his privacy. I never did anything to make him nervous of me or skeptical, you know, or like I can't be in a room with yeah. him. Yeah. Michael would always call me in his hot ass room because he loves heat well, okay he don't like the sun he just because likes of his warm. his skin yeah but he loves his room okay. so warm like you couldn't breathe like you just breathe in hot air and he has the heater on the other side and then a heater in front of him and then a humidifier wow With, you know blowing the because he loves steam mm -hmm. it moistens his voice so I'm sitting in this room, I'm like... <laughs> taking the jacket off. Taking jackets yeah. off, like... Hot. Really? So, but to give you the best description of Michael is... Warm. He would also be the brains behind Blackstreet, who released several major hits from Don't Leave Me, No Diggity, and Girlfriend. Baby, got 
open all over town. Blackstreet would disband and reform many times over the years. Gatlin would go on to compose music for Belvin DeVoe, Keith Sweat, Mariah Carey, and other numerous artists. In 1993, Aaron Hall started his solo career and released his debut album, The Truth. It spawned a couple singles like Don't Be Afraid, Get A Little Freaky With Me, Let's Make Love, and I Miss You. I Miss You was one of the biggest pop hits from the album, peaking at number 14 on the Billboard Hot 100. And Don't Be Afraid peaked at number one on the Billboard Top R&B Song Charts. <laughs> In 1994, he would record with Jewel on the Above the Rim soundtrack from a song called Gonna Give It To You. In 1995, he produced and sang with Dalvid DeGray for the Dangerous Mind soundtrack. Paul had another single toss it up in his 1996 album, The Don Kimilunati, The Seven Day Theory. In that same year, he recorded with Notorious B.I.G. on the song called Why You Trying to Play Me. Baby, is this how you want it to be? On October 20th, 1998, Paul released Inside of You by MCA Records and released his first single, All Places I Will Kiss You. It became a top 10 hit on the Billboard Top R&B and Hip Hop charts and number 30 on the Billboard Hot 100. He would release two more albums in the 2000s. Damien Hall released his solo album Straight to the Point on April 26, 1994. The single Satisfy You featuring Shantae Moore, which reached number 48 on the Billboard R&B charts. Guy did release a song in 1995 called Tell Me What You Like, but no album emerged. But in 1999, that would change when Riley and the Hall Brothers released Guy 3, only spawning two singles, Dancing and Why You Wanna Keep Me From My Baby. However, Guy 3 was poorly promoted and was quickly forgot about when it was released to the public. Here's what Riley said on the failure of Guy 3 on a 2012 interview with Vibe magazine. Quote, we tried to do a Guy reunion album, but I don't think the record company did the third album any justice. MCA didn't really get us at that point, and they were promoting us like we were jazz artists. They took us everywhere else but to our audience. You have to know your demographics for that group. They didn't get us on BET like they were supposed to. They were trying to get us on VH1, but they weren't checking for us. We had our radio record dancing that couldn't get on BET. It was just a failure, end quote. Their reunion turned out to be short-lived. By the time they released their second single, Why You Wanna Keep Me From My Baby, Riley left the group again. Guy would come together over the years from the 2000s to the 2010s, touring with other 90s artists. These days, you you can find the Hall Brothers on Instagram, posted stuff on their daily lives, and recently Damien was interviewed by Vlad TV. Teddy Riley has continued to work on his craft. On October 25th, 2011, he produced the tracks Believe and Flow on the Boys to Men album, 20. If it ain't real, baby girl, it's a knockoff. Oh, I swear you're the one that I wanted. He also produced music for the Korean girl group Girls Generation, Shiny, and EXO. Riley also produced the songs Milk and All Night for FX third studio album Red Light and the song What Is Love for EXO.
Aaron Hall was also on Valid TV for his infamous interview, but he's looking a lot better these days. Yeah. Like the fucking public, you feel me? Yeah. So niggas can't say nothing about it. Them square ass niggas, them precious cake little dick niggas. What? Yeah. I like for them niggas to see how I fuck. Like, if you speak yeah. to Joe to see or Puffy or any of them niggas, yeah. they've been at my house. They all see me fuck. They all know I'm a big nigga. Yeah. Man, what the fuck is you what talking about? So good for him. Timmy Gatlin recently been on interviews and getting the credit he deserved and continued to produce. Teddy Riley and Babyface did a versus battle on Instagram Live with some mixed results. <laughs> Two hours later. Hey guys, we're having technical issues over here, so what we're gonna do. Their music has been sampled by a lot of artists. Sean, Lil Wayne, Lloyd, and the list goes on. I want you to take me Wait, don't let that money make it. I shake that money make it. Don't let that money make it. Guy is one of the most important music groups ever, bringing the new Jack Swing to full effect to the mainstream. Even though Guy didn't last that long, people are still influenced by Guy's unique sound and amazing style. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Let me go. Hey, did you enjoy the video? Did you learn something new? I uh, hope you did. Um, hey guys, I'm Von the Stampede. Don't forget to comment and subscribe and tell me your thoughts on Guy when you f first heard Guy or was your favorite album from Guy. I'm Von the Stampede and I'll see y'all next time. Ciao.